You ready? Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, <clears throat> this is the John Peckman podcast. I am John Peckman coming to you from Connecticut Scout. Why do I keep saying that? Connecticut Scout. Yeah, I got to slow down. Hold on. Okay, let me just get a hold of myself. My name is John Peckman. This is Connecticut Valley School of Music and Dance in beautiful downtown Portland, Connecticut, just over the bridge. Come over the bridge, start looking left. That's all I can tell you, right? It's left, right? Correct? It's left. Over the bridge on the left. Connecticut Valley School of Music and Dance. That's us. We are here with Mr. Alex Kidd. He is a trumpet or brass instructor here at the school. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, sir? Oh, so I'm 27 years old, uh, proud, proud uh, resident or former resident of Portland, Connecticut. I grew up here, went to school here. Nice. Uh, did my bachelor's degree in trumpet at UConn, uh, did my master's in education, University of Bridgeport, and I'm currently teaching fourth through sixth grade band in Litchfield, Connecticut. Oh, wow. That's cool. That's cool. How, how long have you been doing that? It's my third year teaching. Oh, wow. Is it everything you thought it would be? And so much more. Oh, really? So much more. <laughs> Elaborate. Oh, uh, <laughs> so I was I was fortunate enough, and I guess I'll start with a quick story. I was sure. fortunate enough to um, student teach for my master's back in, in Portland with my, my old high school band director. And she was like my second mother when I was in school, but knowing now the other side, she, <laughs> is she prepared me for so much more. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, oh yes. that's cool. Oh, yes. Just just the amount of the amount of communication is with between faculty and parents and and just it's it's just a fun time. So you just showed you how it's supposed to be done. Pretty much. That's awesome. Pretty much. That's great. So high marks for Portland education here. Hundred percent. Oh, excellent. That's good. That's nice, right? Yeah. Cool. I mean, cool. Is she still in the biz? Oh, she's still there. Oh, great. She's still there. Well, that's good. <laughs> that's good. She's never leaving. Wow. Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, good for Portland. That's fantastic. So, um. I don't know. Do you want to start at the very beginning? How did you get into music? How did it all happen? So my path was, was a little different compared to most people's, I guess. I know most, most friends and, and students that I've taught now are, you know, through school, they start that way. Uh, my grandfather is actually a trumpet player. So growing up, I used to be able to, you know, I'd hear him practice all the time at their house with him, him and my grandmother would sit down in the, the living room and I'd sit there and listen. And, you know, from there, when my mom asked me if I wanted to join band, I said, sure. She goes, you're playing the trumpet because it's free and you get free lessons. And I said, okay. <laughs> <You're> like, okay. <laughs> so that's that's kind of where it started. And, um, you know, I took to it. You know, I, I've always enjoyed it. So, and you know, I, I didn't think until middle of high school that I could make a career out of it or that I wanted it to be my career. So mm. that's, and here I am. So. Wow. That's wild. So. What grade did you say you started? I started the summer going into fourth grade. Oh, wow. That's cool. And the, and the town starts in fifth grade, so I started I, a year ahead of everybody. Oh, really? Yep. What, how, why? D just because it was my, the instrument was free. It was my grandfather. Oh, I got you. So it'd be, I come you. over for dinner, and then, oh, you have a lesson today. And that would turn into Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Oh. <laughs> which could have been four days a week. Wow. Yeah, I was just kind of rolling with it. Did you ever think of another instrument, or... It just, were you into music or? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, I always, growing up, my parents always listened to it. It was always on. My mom was baking, cleaning the house, always on in the car, mm. you know, just stuff like that. And I always, I didn't hate it. You know, it was, it was, right. it wasn't something that I was like, turn it off, but yeah, I didn't really think about it in depth until I think I started actually playing an instrument, mm. but it was always something I was around and exposed to, I guess. Would you, if you had to do it all over again, would it still be trumpet? <laughs> I know it's a weird question. I'm just I mean, oh no, it's not a weird question. Um I want to say yes, only sure. because because it's it's the only thing I've really like put a lot of time into. Right. I've always told myself I would love to play cello. Oh. I don't know why I'm terrible at anything stringed. Well. So <laughs> cello's cello seems really like a chilled out kind of thing. Yeah, right. That's pretty much how I am. Yeah. Uh, and then if it had to be another brass instrument, I'd probably play baritone. Oh wow. Phonium, yeah. Wow. Why? I just love the, the rich, the rich tone. It's deep, gotcha. Deep sound. Gotcha. Sounds like, so you like the, the deep, the, the mellow tone of the cello and the baritone. Yeah. Cause I guess trumpet is just so, 
loud and high pitched. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with. But. No, no. I guess that's your thing now, right? Oh yeah. Um, are the, do you have uh, like trumpet heroes? Is it like I because not that you know it's not that trumpet isn't a rock and roll instrument. I just I don't know too many trumpet players, so I don't yeah. know how does that work. I mean, I grew like when my grandfather he listened to a lot of jazz and big band, so I listened okay. to a lot of Wynton Marsalis. Um, gosh, Roy Har I got into Roy Hargrove, he's a okay. player. Um, Dizzy Gillespie, I listened to a lot of just sure. stuff like big band in general. So not even just trumpet players, but Glenn Miller, Benny gotcha. Goodman, all those guys from way back when. Yeah, so it's a, so it's a different. It's not a rock and roll path. Yeah, definitely not. Okay, that's cool. Well, that makes it it makes it different and interesting than most people, I guess, up in here. I guess. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I haven't gotten too deep into uh, just guitar teachers and stuff so far. We had Sarah who plays flute, so that that's interesting. Yeah, do you have do you still do you have trumpet heroes now? Now, definitely Winton. Oh, okay. Winton, he's just just an animal. He's that's like, it, huh? They still the for dude. sure. And then uh, when I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say a hero, but a big influence was my my college teacher. Oh, okay. It was Hanslick. He's a uh, adjunct professor at Juilliard and. You know, he's come from a, tr a line of famous trumpet players as, as, that he had as teachers and stuff. So cool. I was lucky enough to study under him and get a lot of a lot of knowledge. Wow, that's cool. So you're happy with your education, it sounds like. Yeah. It's I, like you lucked out the yeah, whole down the line. I definitely did. <laughs> I asked him, actually, my, my last day of my senior year before I graduated, my last lesson. I was just curious because my audition was absolute garbage. Really? <laughs> it was awful. How come? Absolute awful. Um. So my UConn audition was my third. I only applied to three schools, I and I auditioned at all three. UConn was my last one. Okay. Uh, it got rescheduled once because of snow, <laughs> and then it got rescheduled again because he was out of town playing a game. So I'm going into it. I'm like, all right, you know, and I, I really wanted to go there. <laughs> and I can, I'm just picturing myself now. I didn't let my mom take me to the auditions because she, and I love my mother, but she, she'd be like, are you okay? Do you need water? Do you need this? And oh, like, yeah, okay. And, so she would. And I'm just kind of like. Get you too wound up. Just let me do my thing. And so my dad took me and he's like, I'll wait in the car. And I'm like, sounds good. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I get in, I play my piece. It was the same, the Allstate audition piece that year. And I absolutely bombed it. Like it was, it wasn't only the teacher. It was the teacher, the marching band director, wind ensemble, and then two other teachers because my high school teacher went to UConn and, and had some communication with them saying, hey, my student's going to come audition. And they're like, oh, I just want to listen. Oh, no. So it's me and six <laughs> faculty members. I walk out, walk to the car, and I just start bawling. And my dad's oh, like, no. what, what happened? I'm like, it was so bad. It was so bad. And then uh, so I asked my teacher, and I got in, very fortunate. I'm like, so so why did you let me in? <laughs> yeah, right. And he's like, oh, you, you're a project. I like projects. And I'm like, works for me. Oh. So he's like, I molded you just the way I wanted. And he, he oh. gives me a little smirk. And it was, you know, That's funny. made me giggle. But it was it was a good time. So did you actually, you choked is what you're saying? Oh, 100%. Really? 100%. Huh. Other two auditions, perfect. My first audition, I thought I would bomb. I played everything right. They told me the day of. We loved that. <laughs> I'm like, what? Okay. And you didn't get in. No, I did. I got oh, in. I got in everywhere, but I just didn't go there. I didn't oh, I there. see. Yeah, I see. So you, yeah, you said that. So UConn was your first choice. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good. Yeah. That worked out. Wow. So it's so it's who you know sometimes. <laughs> I guess. I, I, guess. I guess. I could chalk it up to that now, but I can't say at the time that it helped me. That's funny. Well, that's cool though. But yeah. you got in. Yeah, I did my thing and really happy with it. Really? It was worth it? Worth 100%. Oh, good. Okay. So this is all good. Everything's good so far. So far. <laughs> wow. And then what? So did you, when you start your education, are you thinking, what are you thinking? Performance? Or are you thinking education? And if it changed, when and why? So I knew going straight into college, I wanted to be a teacher. Oh, okay. Uh, and that's for my own, I don't know if it's my own like brain function or how it ever works, but you know, I was... My mind, my mentality is not necessarily a performance mentality. Okay. Where like I hate being the center of attention. Sure. I don't like being the spotlight. Like right, like right now. Well, this isn't that bad. It's just two <laughs> people. It's not like <laughs> I'm sitting in an auditorium playing a solo. But sure. But yeah, like center of attention for me is not really my thing. And then I realized I really like seeing growth in 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 students when you know when I started teaching before I was here. Mm -hmm. um, I taught little private lessons on the side, and 
you know, seeing seeing how happy those kids were kind of made me like, oh, I really like this. Yeah. And just being able to help out that way. Yeah. That's it, cool. And not have it be so pressure packed. Wow. I, I mean, I don't perform a lot. I, I played a little bit here and there, but nothing crazy. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, this is this is different because I think a lot of times, or at least so far, it's like us rock and roll dudes <laughs> did we didn't teaching came later. Yeah. You know what I mean? Wow, that's interesting. So you're like right where you want to be. Pretty much. I mean, for right now. Yeah. Sweet spot. Yeah. Um, what would be next? Who knows? You don't know. Well, I'm we applying. Know. I'm applying to school again. So. Oh we'll, really? We'll see. Yeah. Wow. To do what? Uh, doctorate in in uh, educational leadership. Oh wow. And then, hopefully, from there is a master's in music comes out of that. And then, ideal job would be stick me at a college and say, here, here's the athletic bands. Do it. Wow. Like, Sweet. That's cool. That would be the ideal, ideal scenario. Nice. Well, it sounds like you have luck on your side <laughs> at every step. I don't know if I'd call it luck or just wow. or blind yeah. optimism. Well, hey, whatever it takes. It sounds like it's probably going to happen. Let's fingers crossed. I'm trying. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So you don't have any crazy gig stories because. I mean. <clears throat> Maybe not like I have crazy college performances like stories Hit it. about that. <laughs> um, so I subbed for so as is a trumpet player at UConn and, and I'm sure other universities do this too. Um, if you can't make a rehearsal, you have to find a sub for you for that rehearsal. Okay. So I had a buddy who was in the orchestra and he's like, Hey, I have a jazz gig. He was a big jazz player, he's now a comp major, all sorts of stuff. Um, he goes, Can you sub for me? I have this jazz gig, I have to go play. I'm like, sure. What are you playing? So he gives me the music and he gives me like two weeks in advance. I'm playing it. I'm like, anything I need to know? He goes, no, you're good. I'm like, all right. I get to the get to the rehearsal. It's fine. Everything's going fine, going fine. The director points me out and goes, hey, so you're going to play the solo today, right? And oh, like, boy. I'm like, what? Yeah, right. <laughs> I wasn't told I had a solo. Oh, boy. And um, I'm like, explain to, to, I'm like, you know, I'm like, I don't know if he knew who my friend was or who I was or whatever. Yeah, right. And so I'm like, do you even know I'm not even in your ensemble? And he's like, wait, what? You're not in Lance? I'm like, no, I'm a sub. And he goes, oh. <laughs> and now you're going to solo twice. And he still made <laughs> me play it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Are you consider yourself not as a strong solo? Like, why would that be daunting? Oh, I just didn't practice it. I got gotcha. <laughs> it was. So you didn't even a, know the tune that well? No. That long. All right. I mean, I didn't have to know the tune that well. I just had to basically, I was there to take notes. <clears throat> like right in the right on the page and then i like, see <laughs> and like play if he's like trumpets play this and i'm like all right so mm -hmm. i'm playing and he's like oh you're gonna do the solo now and i'm like i didn't practice that oh i see so you're taking notes for him <laughs> for my buddy who's for your buddy in, later and say this is ensemble. what we did yeah. i got gotcha. you and he's just like you're gonna do this because we need to practice this and i was like all right mm -hmm. and i mean it, it didn't sound great you know i apologized to the guy afterwards and he's like oh well you know it's like, funny. And I don't think, I, don't, I think he told my friend never to ask me to sub again, but oh boy, I did anyway. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> are you, are you a good soloist generally? I'm generally. Yeah. yeah I mean, right. so that's something that you learn. I don't know much about the trajectory of trumpet. <laughs> so soloing. Well, I guess if you're in the, if you're playing jazz, right. So improvising, that's a thing. Yeah. You focus on that. Is that was a big part of your education? No. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it was actually. So we did. I did a year of improvisation in middle school. And then wow. When I got to high school, you know, looking back on it now, I wish I did more. Mm. Uh, but I was very happy I didn't have to when I was there. It was it was a lot of written so because you, you know jazz charts in for high school band. It's not like you're just pulling out. You know. Right. You know, I'm not pulling out. You know, um, trying to think like auto leaves. And yeah. then having the group solo, like everyone passed around a solo. It's here's here's the tune we're playing. We're playing Brick House. Yeah. There's a bass solo. There's a trumpet solo. There's a saxophone solo. We're out. Like that's and it's all written. So right, right. So they're like you're gonna play one chorus, two choruses, or whatever. Yeah. It's not just like yeah. All right, that's cool. Yeah. If you let's say you were a a performer, okay, what would be your gig? Would you be in a marching band scenario or a jazz band or like what? If it were me, I'd want to be in a big band. So like, okay. so like Harry Connick Jr., 
Michael Bublé style band okay. and just be like, let the guy do his thing and go, let's play standards. That's cool. I, I love old timey standards. and Nice. Yeah, so that's, that would be my, my ideal performance scenario if I was playing. Yeah. Um, other than that, you know, it, I don't know if there's any professional, like, I, I mean, drum core, but I'm not a big drum core fan. Right. Like, I like drum core, but it's not like. Yeah. That's not your thing. Yeah. That's a whole other thing. Huh? Yeah. It's like a whole other realm. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, wow, that's in, that's interesting. So, um, you're here, you're teaching. You, how long you been here at uh, Connecticut Valley? Oh uh, goodness, I've been on and off for probably four years, three. Or oh, four really? Years. Yeah. We must be on different days. Yeah. So, I, my grandfather was here. I just took his spot. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yep. Wow, that's cool. Mm. So you play other brass instruments besides trumpet you have to double on things in school or so as as an ed major i had to learn every instrument like traditional band instrument so i can play every brass instrument pretty well because it's all very similar muscle memory things and then the buzzing Mm -hmm. and then i can play woodwinds at like a fifth sixth grade level it's pretty nice well that's cool i can jam the hot cross buns on the clarinet yeah right right (laughs) that's cool so you teach only. So you teach trumpet here. Or do you have other? You can teach other instruments. I do. So I have a, a trombone, one trombone student right now. Okay. And a trumpet student right now. Could you teach woodwinds if you had to? If I had to, I could. Okay. I I always tell people privately. You know, if if they ask me to teach a private lesson for a saxophone player, you know, I can teach you technique. I can teach you how to read. Music, cal- music cal- yeah right being right musical is something totally different on that instrument that's cool so you're an asset as a teacher yeah i guess that's what the point of the education uh, you would i would hope so excellent work that's cool all right all right well you know what are your these are just like the general questions are you do you do you practice a lot yeah okay what are you currently practicing is there something that you're specifically working on right now that would be interesting. Uh, right now, uh, range, for sure. Oh, Expand, oh, really? Expanding my range. So, once once you go from playing, I, I don't know how it is because you're a performer. You, you play all the time, gig around, and, and play stuff. You know, as a as a teacher and a trumpet player, it's you go from playing three to five days a week in college to then not playing at all, right? Because you're teaching, okay, or, or you play your own instrument like once a week, mm-hmm. so you lose all of that muscle memory and, and endurance that you had built up. Uh-huh. So it's a constant. So you have to stay on it. Yeah. Okay. If I, and I, like I play, I play Christmas and Easter gigs and stuff like that. So it's at least I did before the pandemic and all that. Sure. Didn't too much this year, but you know, having that range and cause you can have people throw stuff at you and just be able to do it. Yep. But having all that, yeah, you have to keep up with it or else you lose it quick. How quick did, did have you ever lost it? Yes. Really? Cur- currently seeking it. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm in the woods right now. Really? Looking for it. Wow. Got my flashlight. And my how long does it take? Depends. Depends on how much how much time you put in. I mean, you could put in too much. You can over practice. I mean, you can. Is it? Enough. Is it? Is it? The, is it your lip? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's the main it's, thing it's you got to keep. And then and then the breathing part. Cause like you forget, okay, you, forget like you get into a rhythm mm-hmm. like when you, when you, when you breathe, which sounds kind of weird, Yeah, no. but you get into, you get into a mode where you're like, Oh, this is the size of the breath I need to get to here. I see. So that's what you mean with muscle memory. Yeah. I, I, even in your lungs. Yeah. Wow. And, and, and the lungs go quicker than your lips do. I mean, lips go quick. Don't get me wrong, but sure. But everything is like, and it's gone. So that's what you got to keep. Yeah. Okay. Well, Yeah. Did anyone ever tell you that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. When you were, when I you're was, like you, you got it. This is a lifetime thing. Oh, my grandfather. He's 88, 89. Really? I've been around there. And wow. He plays an hour a day every day. Really? <laughs> yep. Wow. <laughs> Texted me the other day. I got a new mouthpiece. And I'm That's like, typical yeah. of trumpet players. Maybe, maybe a little, some a little more than an hour. I mean, it depends on what you're doing. But wow. I'm, I'm, I'm at a steadfast hour. So range. Yeah. Higher. Yeah. Lower. Both. Both. Okay. So pedal tones, so below the staff, and then my max, my range was at its maximum was at a, a F above the staff, or two lines above the staff. So that's a single F. Yeah. Yeah, but that was my, I maxed out there. Okay. But the typical range for, I would think, and it's most people that I've, I've been around, the brass players is from middle C to 
double C or high C is what they call it. Okay. So you're getting there. Yeah. I'm at, I'm at a C. Oh, okay. I, gotta, I mean, that's, that's where it goes, but everything else from that is so the increments are so small that you have to like, yeah, right. There's, there's, they're small, but, but large at the same time. And what is it? I don't know much about trumpet. What is it? It's making the, so, what is it? So it's like, what is the, is it, well, I don't know what you call it. Do you make your blow hole smaller? Oh, like, um, I don't know how to put um, it. Embouchure. Uh, okay. For all okay. you students right. listening. Right. Yeah. The Thank e you. Word. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> no. So your, well, your embouchure is your mouth formation. The aperture is the hole. Okay. Is what they call it where your air comes out. But, um, it's not so much making that bigger or smaller but it's making the air coming out of it either a tighter stream of air or a looser stream of air. I see. So the tighter the air stream, the faster you can blow it, which is the higher the pitch. Okay. So the looser the air stream, the lower it goes, the lower the pitch. So that's why tuba, your, your buzzing is not, it's like your whole mouth moving. Like, I can't even do it. Yeah, the yeah. trumpet is still like, I know I'm doing it in the microphone and no sure, one can see me, but it's fine. Yeah. But yeah. Wow. So you're, you're just, you're trying to, just t tighten everything back up. Oh yeah. Gotcha. Are you gonna make it? Probably. You're gonna. So you're trying <laughs> to get back to where you were. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because of the pandemic. Mostly, yeah. Because I stopped. I don't play as many gigs now. Like I play. I try to play some musicals. Like I'll play in pit orchestras and stuff like gotcha. that. Gotcha. So, uh, like I played West Side Story and wanted to die. Cause, oh, cool. Because that that trumpet part is insanely hard. That just whole book is. Oh, really? Oh, Does everyone know that? Every trumpet player is like, oh, not, no. Not even every trumpet player, just every pit orchestra member. Or oh, really? Musician. Yeah, Leonard Bernstein made it impossible. Um, but yeah, that, that book is tough. It's just rhythmically challenging, range challenging. Mm. Um, so I played that before and it was not great. <laughs> well. But it is what it is. And I, yeah, but I play shows like that and you got to have, you got to have the full gamut. Yeah, right. Wow. Where, uh, where, uh, local schools. So I played, uh, you know, I teach in Litchfield, so I played their show. Okay. Uh, I've been lucky enough. So they've invited me down here to Portland and played their, their pits a couple of times. Cool. Um, I've played in, when I was in college. I played in Tolland, played in Mansfield. Okay. Just around. That's cool. What was your favorite, um, your favorite musical? Oh man. That's a tough one. Um, uh -oh. to play is probably Chicago. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's probably my favorite book. Okay. And then as much as I, I gripe about and moan about the West Side Story book, it's a, it's a good show to play. Mm -hmm. It's just really hard. Mm. What's your least favorite? Can you say? Yes. Um, I hate <laughs> playing Wicked. Okay. Why? It's it's just boring. I mean, okay. I get the show's popular and people love it, and this might be a, a controversial take. No, oh, whatever. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's just, to me, it's just, just okay it, it's it's like typical stuff it's like normal stuff i got you and then like you get a lot of the classics quote unquote are are easier and they all kind of sound the same like because mm. rogers and hammerstein was x many years sure they, like, they just rattled off shows oh i got you so it's like they're all they're not cookie cutter but they're fairly you cool. know yeah so you know the range as far as like Okay. And, and, and how, how hard it's going to be and like the you. style they want it and all that stuff. So it's, it's, I do like a little bit of a challenge mm. sometimes, but. Far out. Yeah. All right. Well, you know what? Wacky questions. You uh, ready? Do you know about the wacky questions? Uh, I know one wacky question. That's all I was told. Oh, man. I, I got to think of different wacky questions. I, I was so. just told one. I was just oh, told really? One. Yeah. I, I, I said, I'll just want to know one. Don't tell me anything else. Okay. I don't know if this is the one. Um, I don't, but see, I I always have to say this because I assume I'm a music freak. Okay. Like I listen to music all the time. I'm always trying to listen to something. And I mis, I mis, assume everybody's like that. And I realize some people are not. Are you like that? I do listen to a lot. Yeah. Okay. Then maybe you can answer this. It's just crazy. You're on a desert I island. Okay. One album. What, what, what one album says everything to you? And is it possible? I don't think one album is possible. Well, give me a couple. Uh, so Ear Food is a Roy Hargrove album. Okay. Uh, Strasburg Saint Denis is probably the okay ticket ticket number on that one, which I like a lot. Um, so uh, some kind of blue. Oh sure. Yeah, that just just the whole Miles anything Miles Davis would be okay. Yeah, I mean, pretty, not alone on just, that. Just kind of jam out with that. 
Sure. Um, I'm trying to think is is it live from the House of Tribes, which is a Winton album. I don't, you I'm know, pretty, I have to I'm be pretty, honest. I don't I'm know. Pretty, yeah, I don't, I don't, I think that's what it's called anyway. I haven't listened to that one in a while, but I have that stowed. You'd be happy with those. Yeah. All right. Cool. I can, I can really listen to anything. You could just give me something random. Really? And I'll kind of listen. I'll, just not wicked. <laughs> yeah. Pref- preferably not wicked. All right. That's cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, maybe, I don't know if you know, this question is coming either. And I've, I've tried to figure out a way to reframe this question because everybody challenges me and goes, well, do you mean? What is the moment when you're eating something and you go, I could eat this every day? First bite. Yeah. yeah. When you're just like, well, see, again, I, I'm learning more about myself because I realize not everybody's as weird as me. Because why would you instantly think like this, but you eat and you go, what would happen if, if, if you could only eat only this? And I go, well, what circumstance would that be where you would only be permitted to eat one thing? But Or I would think of it this way. I would pick like something like chicken because you can make it in a million different ways. Gotcha. Is that your answer? Was that the question? No. All right. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> no, the question is, I guess, if you could only eat one thing every day for the rest of your life, what would it be? One thing. Sure. Probably mac and cheese. What? Mac and cheese. Really? Yeah. Okay. All right, I think that's a good answer. What to who from where? Anywhere. 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 Any t- any style. Yeah. Uh lobster mac delicious. Ooh. Bacon mac and cheese, you know. Sure. It could be from the Biggie, it could be from a box. Really? Do you like the craft? I mean, I'll eat it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like buying You're not too good for I'm not what no, no. But that's not your go-to. No. Okay. Wow, mac and cheese. I like um I like you ever have, yeah. You ever have this? I like mac and cheese, stewed tomatoes in there. You ever do that? No. I've oh. Put hot sauce in it though. Yeah, you gotta get into that. I'll have to try that. All right, cool. What are my other wacky questions? Dave's here. <laughs> I'm in a I'm in a transitional period. I'm trying to, I'm trying to leave some out or put some in. I can't I can't think of. What's my who? Oh yeah. Yeah. We were getting into that for a while. I was just curious and I don't even know why. I just think it's interesting. Do you care about astrology? I mean, it's to me, it's, it's, it's curious. It's like a curious thing to know about, but do I like live and die by? Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't either. I don't either. I just, for some reason I thought it would be interesting to ask people, but yeah, now we'll have to get in. We'll have to get into something different. We got to get into different wacky questions. (laughs) You know, favorite color. How about that? Favorite color? Yeah. Purple. Really? Yeah. How come? I don't know. I just, I just always have liked the color purple. Sure. I, no, you know, no, no meaning to the show or connection or anything. Just gotcha. Just, just a chilled out. It, it's mostly for about me is I'm pretty relaxed most of the time. I got gotcha. you. And so, purple's a chill color to you. Yeah, it's not like loud or it's pretty. You can make it muted. It can be in the forefront, background. All wow. All kinds of things. So you like you have it together. Like everything in your life supports everything else. I'd like to think so. Yeah, that's great. I'd fall apart. What's that like? That must be cool. Uh, you you would think so. (laughs) You would think so. (laughs) Wow. Can be boring at times. Don't get me wrong. Oh, nothing wrong with boring. I'll take boring. Boring's fine. I'd love to be bored. (laughs) You know, occasionally. All right. Well, you know what? This is pretty good. You think? Yeah. Do you have anything else that you want to talk about that we didn't talk about? Oh, man, I don't know. You're the boss. I'm just here. Wow. I don't know about that. I'm lucky enough to be here. Well, we're all lucky enough to be here. That's true. Shout out. We're all lucky enough to be anywhere at this point, (laughs) right? Absolutely. All right, cool. All right, well, you know what? You want to? You want to just? I'm I'm good with whatever. I could I could sit here and talk for days if you need. <laughs> can figure something out. I'm good at I'm good at BSing, I guess. Yeah. Well, you know, we could do this again. Hey, anytime. We could do this again. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, tell everybody your name again. Say goodbye to the people of the world. People of the world. My name is Alex Kidd. There he is. Thank you very much. Mr. Alex Kidd, ladies and gentlemen. Brass teacher here at Connecticut Valley School of Music and Dance. Beautiful downtown Portland, right? Right across the bridge. You come over the bridge, you go start looking left. 
You can't miss us. Thank you, Alex Kidd, for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, man. I'll see you. Have a good one. Later. Thanks a lot. I'm John Peckman. Have a good one, right? Is that what you wanted? Beautiful. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening, folks. See you later.